Turning now to an essay contest among young people that gives us remarkable insight into a lost history, you could say. The recently unearthed essays were written by Jewish people living in Eastern Europe in the 1930s, right before World War II and the Holocaust. Now the word is getting to hear some of their fast. Now the world, rather, is getting to hear some of their fascinating stories. Jim Axelrod shows us how they're part of a new graphic novel. The basement where cartoonist Ken Krimstein offers his takes on contemporary life is just outside Chicago. Your chosen method here of communication is not just words, right. but pictures. Yes. But lately, his attention's been focused 5,000 miles away on Vilnius, Lithuania, and an essay contest for Jewish teenagers held more than 80 years ago. What grabbed you? There were little details in there. This one listened to records, this one went ice skating, and I was like, these are real people. The contest was sponsored by YIVA, an organization founded in 1925 in Vilnius to preserve Jewish culture. It was a very fantastic time of dreaming and dreading. Jonathan Brent is the executive director and CEO of YIVO, now headquartered in New York. The future was, on the one hand, very optimistically thought of by many people, and on the other hand, the storm clouds were gathering because of the rise of Nazism. The contest asked teens to describe their lives. YIVO curator Eddie Portnoy. This is from an anonymous person who signed this Vergess mich nicht, forget me not. Entries were anonymous to elicit unvarnished takes from the next generation on what their futures might look like. Here is a real father who abandons a mother. Here is a loving couple. Here is a divorce. Here are all of the problems. Here is a broad swath of humanity. Of humanity, exactly. A winner set to be announced September 1st, 1939, was never named after Hitler invaded Poland that very same day. The Nazis plundered Jewish artifacts, including some of the essays, and shipped them back to Germany, where they were later found by the U.S. Army. Other entries were hidden. In 2017, a bunch were discovered in a church in Vilnius. I was like, my God, these stories need to be told. Krimstein pulled six for his new graphic novel, When I Grow Up. The Eighth Daughter a 19-year-old feminist forbidden to pray for her father when he died. The guy said to her, you know a woman's prayer isn't worth anything. Her comeback, for the first time I began not to understand God. The letter writer, a 20-year-old young man reaching out to America for a visa he never got. What do you think happened? <sighs> he probably perished. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I shudder to think of what happened to him, actually. The folk singer who loved music but couldn't pursue it. The boy who liked a girl. The ice skater. And a rule breaker who entered the contest even though she was just 11 and a half. I did feel an obligation. I didn't have their names, but maybe they could live again. When the New York Times ran a story on the found essays in 2017, it included a rare picture found on the cover of one. And so my sister forwarded it to me, and we both looked at it and were like, oh my God, that's mom. The rule breaker had a name, Beba Epstein, who survived three different concentration camps. This was a Beba you hadn't known? Really didn't know her. Five years after his mother's death, Michael Leventhal discovered much more about her life. To hear it in the voice of an 11-year-old, that's just something you don't get to do. Has Beba's family seen your drawings? They have, and they liked them, <laughs> thank goodness. In telling Beba's story and five others whose names we don't know, Ken Krimstein hopes to illuminate what we share and warn us all against making anyone else the other. You have kids talking about hopes, dreams, challenges. The one thing you never hear these kids consider is annihilation. Yeah, and who could have? I mean, how can you even? Uh, we we can't even understand it today. Mm. It's powerful stuff, Jim. Uh, you know, it, it is a shared humanity. Hopes, dreams, boy likes girl. You know, I yeah. got to tell you, there was such a um, pervasive feeling of sadness mm. as I was reporting the story that didn't leave me. There is something about Ken Krimstein finding these and, and writing this book, this graphic novel, 
that there's just something about the fact that the stories are not lost exactly. forever right. that allows these kids, nameless mostly, but still allows them to live on. Mm. It's the stories of those kids, but it's just stories of human beings out there in the world. That's a reminder. It's exactly. our humanity, our shared humanity. Jim, thank you very much.